talk about inheritance, here is the definition that we use is this. All that God is accessed by faith in Jesus Christ and made manifest in us and around us by the indwelling and empowerment of the Holy Spirit, which we steward for his purposes and for his glory. So all that God is, our inheritance is all that God is accessed, how? By faith in Jesus Christ. And, and then what happens? Then it is made manifest in us and around us by the indwelling and the empowerment of God's spirit, which we steward, we steward all that is given to us for his purposes and for his glory. We have been made right with the Father through Jesus. And because we have a Father, we have an inheritance. And that's the beauty of this story, is that we have in Christ what we could never earn. It is given freely. And as it is given freely, we are adopted as sons and daughters into his family. And because we have a good father, we do have an inheritance. And so that's the reality of what we're trying to walk out and what we're trying to understand, that one of the most profound things, or if not the most profound thing that took place on the cross where Jesus died and gave his life for us, and when Jesus was resurrected from the dead, and when he ascended to be seated on the throne of heaven, the most profound thing that took place in that process is that we were brought in to be joint heirs with Christ. It is something that we cannot comprehend. It is something that we cannot understand, but not being able to comprehend it or understand it does not mean that we should step back from it and say, oh, it's too much. It means that we should set a lifestyle of prayer and listening to the Lord and knowing the Lord that would say, if every day I have one tiny incremental revelation of what that means, that's enough for me to live out today. And that we would have a lifestyle of finding ourselves on our knees in awe and in wonder saying, what does this mean? What does it mean to be joint heirs with Christ? And so that's what we get to do as we discover our inheritance. Romans 8, 15, 4. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption. When we said yes to Jesus, we did not receive a, a spirit of fear, but we received the spirit of adoption. And because we've received the spirit and the heart of adoption, we can cry out, Abba, Father. When we're speaking to our Heavenly Father, we come into that depth of relationship. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. And so we receive that spirit and that spirit in us and upon us bears witness that we are children of God. And if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we persevere with him that we may be glorified together. The reality of a surrendered life to the Lordship of Jesus is that we stay in that place of humility and dependence on Jesus through every day, no matter what comes, no matter what we face. And we cannot walk that out in our human strength, but we can walk that out as we learn to receive and not just receive, but to understand that revelation that, that the Spirit of God rests upon us that says you can cry out to God. You have a good Father. And as I said earlier, because you have a Father, you have access to all that Jesus is and all that Jesus has is now available to you. It is staggering to even begin to try to comprehend what that fully entails. But what does that mean for us now? Ephesians 2 and Ephesians 1. Ephesians 2 says this, and this is Paul early church missionary, early church apostle who wrote so much of our understanding of, of, of what this all entails. And he says this, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realm in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace. The incomparable riches of his grace, the revelation of Jesus and being in Jesus are part of our inheritance in Christ which means this, that we have received and been given every spiritual blessing. Paul says, praise be to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Now this is the heavenly realms, but it doesn't mean it is the eternal place. It means that as we are in Christ, every spiritual blessing that is, that is held in Jesus is now made available to us because we too are seated in Christ and have access to the fullness of who he is.